So congratulations. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, where you are, and how to contact you. So are we recording this right now? Yep, you're on recording. Oh, okay, good. So um, my name is Michael Grudadoria, and I have been practicing for about 20, over 25 years now. And what I've realized over the years is that I have kind of cross-trained in many different disciplines because as I, as I started to see changes in people in my, you know, in my practice, I realized that there was something missing. So then I would pursue that and then something for missing and I pursued that. Like I started out in chiropractic and, and sports injuries. And then I got very much interested in neurology and then you know, did the postgraduate neurology program and became a diplomate in neurology. And then over the years realized that I was always talking about diet and nutrition with patients and then just was naturally interested in the biochemistry and then pursued with that. So, you know, at this point, what I've done uh, with, with all these different things is try to put together a toolbox to be able to help patients with all different types of problems and apply what I think they need, whether it be neurological rehabilitation, uh, functional medicine approach, structural chiropractic approach, or a combination of all of those things. And, you know, when it's all wrapped in their genetics, but also with their mindset and how they think and their belief in themselves and do they feel like they can get better. Because usually by the time they get to me, what I'm seeing is uh, a group of people who have been through the mill. You know, many of them have, you know, have been, are, are taking multiple medications. They haven't seen results from the, the doctors that they've been working with. And, you know, they, they find out about me and, and they go, well, you know what? We don't really know anything about functional neurology or functional medicine, but we've exhausted all, all the other possibilities, so we'll give it a shot. And then we end up, you know, figuring it out. So, you know, like you said, it, it, it's detective work and it's trying to understand how does the body work versus trying to label what that patient has. And it's a huge distinction between what and why. So, you know, usually, and, and I kind of laugh with my patients, um, you know, especially when we talk about things like migraine. So a patient goes into their doctor and they say, doc, I have this horrible pain in my, behind my eye, it's throbbing on the side of my head and, you know, it happens and, and it, I, I get, you know, light sensitivity, sound sensitivity, I have to lay in bed, you know, I have these horrible migraines and the doctor says, well, let me take a look at you. And the doctor takes a look at them and does a, a physical exam and says, well, Mrs. Jones, you, you do have migraines. And it's like, Doc, I told you I had migraines. I didn't need you to tell me that. I want to know why do I have migraines? And the doctor happens all too of, often. Happens and all got, too often. And, and, and but the doctor's like, listen, we don't really worry about why you have them. We're going to rule out a tumor, so we'll do an MRI. But basically, what we can offer you is a series of different medications to try to manage the migraines. So you know, managing a problem versus fixing it is very different. So what we do in our field in, in neurology and, and functional medicine is to try to find out why does this person have this, you know? So with migraine in particular, we know that it's, uh, it, it's a dysfunction for, for the most part, pure migraine is a dysfunction in something called the trigeminal uh, vascular system. So the trigeminal system is, is in the brain stem. It's a series of nerve, um, you know, nerves in the, in the cranial nerve area that controls the vascular system. And when you have dysfunction in that region, it causes changes in the way your body handles um, you know, electrical activity. So it's an, a change in electrical activity in the brain. It's almost like a brain attack. So, you know, we have to look at that when, you know, previously it's always been thought that this was a vascular problem. And, you know, although there is a vascular component, it's a primary neurological problem and it can be caused by many different things. So we have to kind of step back and go, well, you know, what does the research say? The research says that the common ground with all these people is that they have brainstem dysfunction. And that doesn't show up on an MRI or an EEG. So we have to be really creative and come up with ways to identify that. So we could do it through clinical exam and the type of evaluations that you and I do. Um, but then we can look a little deeper. We could do, uh, you know, specific testing to uh, actually videotape eye movements and look at, you know, the, the major, uh, you know, processes that the eyes can go through, like, you know, saccades and pursuits and virgins and, you know, and all the different, you know, minor tweaks that can happen within those, those, you know, specific, um, movements. But then we also have to look at what's going on chemically. Cause very often a patient will say, well, you know, when I drink coffee, it increases my, it increases my headaches. Or if I have chocolate, 
or you know certain foods or if i'm if i get really cold you know so a lot of different kinds of chemical things go on so we have to do you know we do extensive lab work blood urine stool and then they also commonly complain about neck pain that goes along with the headache so we have to look at the structure and look at how their tmj is working how their neck is working so we really need to be the ultimate generalist when it comes to evaluating our patients because we don't want to fit them into a box we want to create a box for them yeah exactly so i mean this this approach is the same approach i embrace going mm -hmm. forward and um <clears throat> but we've known each other for a long long time for years right mm -hmm. many years and I had a hemorrhagic stroke in my left basal ganglion, touching my thalamus. And um, I was in pretty bad shape. So I got out of the hospital on Tuesday. And I get a call from you. Right? Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, man. What'd you say to me? I was like, pack your shit and come up and hang out with me. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so... I'll tell you what, my family thought I was nuts. Like, you know, I, mean, I see a medical doctor and all this stuff, and I'm like, you know, I've been doing this stuff for years, and, man, this rings true for me, and uh, let's go, man, let's go. So I packed my mother up. My mother came with me. Yep. And when you saw me for the first time, what'd you think? Well, I mean, you know, it, it was a very, a very common stroke presentation. You know, there was there were areas of, of weakness, you know, as, for people that may not know what a stroke is, a stroke is, um, you know, a change in blood vessels, either either a blockage or a bleed that causes damage to the brain. And then, you know, what we need to do is wait to see exactly what areas of the brain were damaged. And we can, you know, usually see that in the motor system. And sometimes we'll see, like with you, you had, you know, some paresis and, you know, you, you had to walk with a cane and things like that. So, you know, the question is, you know, is this, is this really damaged or can we rehabilitate the brain? And the answer is very commonly, we can really do some pretty amazing things, especially when we start out very early on, you know, after the injury. And, exactly. Um, yeah, and, but you did you know, how many times as functional neurologists and functional medicine people do we get a chance to treat a really acute stroke in the beginning? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Very rarely. You know, yeah, usually, you know, usually people go through – um, you know, they go, you know, months or years before they get to us. Exactly. So a lot of strokes I'm treating now are strokes that are years old and they're finally getting to me. But, you know, I mean, what I want to do is I want to start changing that so that people start coming to us right after they get out of the hospital. That's yeah. The I mean, the, you know, early intervention, you know, early intervention, it's, you know, the earlier, the better, because, you know, you have a chance to stimulate brain regions that can create something called synaptogenesis, you know, the ability for nerves uh, and the neurons that are in well, and I'm around. Gonna, I'm going to stop you for a second, okay? Go ahead. So I want to tell a story, right? And I want to tell a story about you, right? <laughs> and uh, um, you, know, you know you're with the right doctor when you see the look on, your, on the doctor's face, right? So you have a game face. You know that, right? Well, you know, you, you want to, you, you know, it's very serious when you see a patient. Yeah, man, you're somebody, serious. You're like, somebody in distress. Let's you know, go. You be, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, and, you know, you learn this from, you know, from our mentors. You know, you watch how, you know, it's all about observation and, you know, you're locked in on, you know, trying to pick up on, the, you know, the, the really smallest of things. To be all able the subtleties, to guide. right? Yeah, the subtleties could guide the treatment, and it can make all the difference in the world. Okay. So after we got in, we started to do intravenous nutrition. We did hyperbaric oxygen. We did neurofeedback. We did functional neurology. We did physical therapy, functional physical therapy. We did some lasers to the brain. I mean, I was in there all day. Yeah, yeah, you were doing right? it all. And, and that's like, the nice thing, you know. You know what are you doing? That? A Why very... you can't be working that hard. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, hours a day. Me now, right? And then the first thing you started to say to me, like, every day was autophagy, Joe. Autophagy. You remember that? Yeah. Now, why did you say autophagy to me? 
So autophagy is, is the body's ability to um, basically clean itself up. And, you know, what we have, we have an amazing ability for uh, repair and inflammation is usually the first step in the repair process, but we can force the body into this repair system using something called autophagy where um, the cells actively clean out damaged or, or, you know, I guess toxic uh, debris from different nerve cells. And it usually happens through low calorie intake. So fasting and, uh, and like a yeah, ketogenic kind of program, you know, as far as the diet goes, can actually stimulate tremendous brain healing. So, you know. So when I was up there, I went ketogenic. Right. Right. And when I was up there, I did two day fast the first week yep. and a three day fast the second week. Now I'm going to tell you the three day fast, I was cursing you a little bit, just a little <laughs> bit when I did the three day fast. Yeah, I it's it's it. hard, you know. It's yeah. hard. I just I just did I just did a day and a half this week, you know. So mm -hmm. it's important for us to use this as a tool because it, it enables us to help the body to stay well. Like like lions in the wild might eat a zebra today and they might not eat another zebra for a week. So, you know, in nature we feed and fast. You know, animals feed and fast. And we we created the idea of three or four meals a day and snacks in between. That's all a man made construct. So our body is really designed for fasting periods. And, and that's the, you know, that's, that's why our, our, you know, physics and biochemistry is set up the way they are, but we just don't employ that. Most people can't fast between breakfast and lunch. So, you know, it's important for us to use that as a tool in our box to be able to help the patients that we see, especially with, you know, uh, like an acute injury like you had, or even with, you know, chronic neurological issues and neurodegeneration. Right. So, um, I, I bought into the principle. Not that I didn't buy into it before, but when you had to do it personally, yeah, you really that's that's a it, that's a transaction, man. And you're making it's not it easy. right there. It's not easy, you know. When it's not when you, easy, but I mean, I lost 36 when, pounds through the process. Yeah, and yeah, um, but you know what? What happens is, you know, your your body really like recycles. You know, there, there are some studies that say five days of water only will recycle your entire immune system. So, you know, we know that this is real. We know that ketogenic diets have been, have been employed for, you know, decades for people with chronic neurological conditions, especially, um, you know, seizure patients. Seizure so, activity, yeah. We, yeah, we know that if we force the brain to use ketones, especially if we cycle, like I'm a believer in cycling this and using it as a tool, uh, I'm not really, a, I'm not necessarily on board with a ketogenic lifestyle at this point because I do believe our body needs variety but I think that using ketogenics as a tool is is a very very powerful thing exactly yep and then um, I spent two weeks up there and I came home um, I ended up going down to Florida to see Dr. Ted Carrick the, and then the master, I came the back I came back mentor. to you in August right yeah. And then I had my follow-up MRI in September, the end of September, right? Mm -hmm. And I took my follow-up MRI to a local neurologist that was here. <clears throat> and I had no sign of stroke. What did he say? No sign that I had what, stroke. What the, what the doctor so said. autophagy meant, right, <laughs> that that scab that was a space-occupying sign that something happened poof was gone and the only finding that they had was that i had my ventricles which is the cerebral mm -hmm. spinal brain fluid areas were bigger because the volume of the brain decreased right what what's so, amazing what's amazing though is that you had this you know this very unfortunate event but at the same time your your unbelievable um you know dedication to getting better has and i mean you it's it's absolutely i i can't tell at all you know i mean but i wish we had some audio of you when you first came in because your speech was slurred you had you know you had drooping in your face like you had a, you know you had some significant neurological signs which are not even evident anymore so you know when when you have an experience like that you can turn around and people see you as a model because they realize that 
not only do you know this clinically, but you've experienced it, and therefore you are the authority. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really what happened, right? So the reason we're doing this video is that, I mean, I want people everywhere to understand that our profession, you mm -hmm. and I, and a lot of other great practitioners throughout the country, we're doing something that's absolutely new and novel and works tremendous, has very, it's very powerful for it, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so I'll tell autophagy, and then the um, second thing we talked about was plasticity, right? Right. Returning function back to parts of the brain that have lost nerves, lost interconnections, and so forth and so on, and get that process rolling. Right. Um, so I was really motivated to do that, like when we, after we had done the work that we did at your place, when mm -hmm. I got home, I started walking the track, swimming. I, I turned my, my old bedroom into a, a neurological lab where I was doing all kinds of, of things uh, for my vision, for my balance, and so forth and so on. So that was kind of part of it, too. So that whole thing where we did the autophagy, where we had to clean out the, the brain, and right. like you said, it's very possible for us to do that. And then, yeah, and then you, you were getting the ions, process getting, of plasticity, right? Right. You know, nutrients, you know, oral nutrients, you were getting some, some IV nutrients. So, you know, all of these things, you know, this was a very comprehensive approach because you really need to hit it from so many angles when you have, you know, such an acute injury like this. But, it, you know, what we do in order to really stimulate this, um, you know, this plasticity, synaptogenesis, the ability of the brain to heal and to create new connections is, you know, has been known for a long time. It just, we can actually, what we're trying to do as functional neurologists is actually push that, that process, to, to force it to happen in a way that we want it to happen by, by training the brain. You know, if it's like physical therapy for the brain, neurotherapy. And, you know, what we're able to do is actually guide the process, which is incredible. You know, so understanding, you know, how the system works really sets us up to be really dynamite clinicians. And, and you know, I mean, I owe, you know, just all of my knowledge to the Carrick Institute because without them and Dr. Carrick, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know any of this. But, you know, the, um, the, the amazing people that, you know, that we are, or call colleagues are doing what we're doing, you know, in pockets around the world. And, you know, unfortunately, it's not mainstream yet, but, you know, I think at some point it will be. Well, you, for example, um, are an expert at functional neurology. You're an expert at functional medicine, right? And your, um, your teaching is going to be in functional medicine at chiropractic college. Is that true? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually working in the, uh, the master's program as a adjunct clinical professor at the University of Bridgeport in their uh, human nutrition program. Right. So I'm teaching a class called pathophysiology, which is really awesome because I get to teach um, how does the body get hurt and how does it get diseased? But from not only a, you know, a strict um, scientific basis, but from a functional perspective. So not only how does this happen, but what we can do to actually make it better. So it's really, it's a very motivational thing because, you know, I get to, to work with, you know, people who want to go out into the field and, and help others and, and understand, you know, the, the basis of, you know, clinical pathophysiology, but really in a way that they can actually make changes. Well, you know, in functional medicine, I kind of look at functional medicine as um, having its own plasticity, really. Like our biochemical pathways and our enzyme systems and our use of amino acids can be learned. There can be learned processes in the body biochemically. Do you agree with that, Doc? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, from, from, you know, taking it to the next level, you know, we, what, we, what we fail to realize is that we stopped living in accordance with nature about 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, so you remember that show Little House on the Prairie? Yeah. You know, so for 10,000 years, that's how we had evolved to live. Outside, with nature, um, we would wake up when the sun came up. We would be outside most of the day. Then we would go inside into a shelter. 
indoor electricity. We didn't have iPads and iPhones and, you know, and all these different things. So we weren't overexposed to non-native EMF, which is electromagnetic frequencies that change neurological function. We didn't eat processed foods. So our lives have changed so dramatically. And, you know, we think that all these technological advances and, you know, and, and the ability to have a refrigerator is actually a really good thing. But in many ways, it's created a chronic illness problem, in, you know, in our country because, you know, we eat too much, we eat the wrong stuff, we don't exercise enough, we don't get enough sunlight, we get overexposed to blue light. So it's really what we need to do as, as doctors is really look at what's going on with this patient. Not, not only what are they presenting with, you know, what kind of complaint do they have, chief complaint, but what is their lifestyle like? And let me try to unwind and teach them how to live at a higher level so that not only can we fix this problem that they present with, but we can actually help them to be healthy ongoing. Yeah, exactly. And you make a lot, of, you, a lot of your posts. I read all your posts and I love all your posts. And, uh, Thanks, you know, that one simple concept, light, right? And right now we put suntan lotion on all the time. We go outside, we protect ourselves from the sun because we worry about skin cancer. But the truth is that light, some light exposure is healthy for our body. Yeah. You know, um, vitamin D production would not have been linked to sunlight exposure if we weren't supposed to be in the sun. Right. So, you know, well, let's, just, we, let's just talk about that point. Right. So why is vitamin D important in the body? So vitamin D is a pro hormone and it works very closely with the immune system, but light is much more than vitamin D. You know, there, we have certain receptors in the back of our eye, like we have something called rods and cones that allow us to, to perceive light and to create vision. But we have another set of receptors. We have a totally separate receptor system, which is called the melanopsin receptor system, that actually transmits and transforms light energy from the back of our eye directly into our brain through something called the retinohypothalamic pathway. And that is really hitting the hypothalamus, which drives all of our autonomic functions. So hormone releases and all the different metabolic processes in our body are linked to the way our body's exposed to light. It also drives um, our circadian rhythms. So we have a day-night cycle. So, so how many people do you know? How many patients come in and say they can't sleep? They can't fall asleep. They can't stay asleep. And, you know, all of these things are also related to light and how the circadian biology is being disrupted by not only diet, but our light exposure, what we're exposed to during the day and how much overexposure to, to light that we, have, we get at night. So many different things. I mean, we could, we, I, I love talking about this. because we. I know you do. Here. That's why I brought it up. You know what I mean? It's like, I see all your posts all the time. I'm like, this guy's the best. I love it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, when we were kids, right, they, they were the days where you got thrown outside in the morning and then you didn't come home until you either were starving to death, right? Or, you know, they were going to lock you out because it was too late to go to bed, right? So, right. Um, I mean, I can remember that's all we do is play. You know, movement, sunlight, out in the fresh air, and playing, you know? And um, it, it, was uh, a different it really develops your nervous system, makes your nervous system really, really strong mm -hmm. by doing all the fundamentals of of activity and nutrition and sunlight and and all those things right clean food clean water clean air clean clean sunlight all contributes to building a really fantastic and strong body mind and soul too yeah yeah so you know what we what we really need to you know the message that we really need to kind of continue to to push is that you know, when people come in and they have chronic illness and 60 to 70 percent of people in America, adults in America have chronic illness. Um, one in six kids is, is on psychotropic medication. So we're in the middle of, of a crisis, a health care crisis. One, of, one in six kids are on psychotropic medication. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So we're in we're in a health care crisis. And, you know, we we have we spend more money than any other country in the world on health care. But it's really not healthcare; it's sickness care, because we only use our health insurance when we're sick. Um, unfortunately, they don't really pay for wellness. They don't pay for functional medicine to, to sit down with a doctor for several hours and, and, and really pour 
or over or, and then what we can do to turn this around so you can avoid having cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and all these other things, or at least minimize your risk for them. So, you know, I think that as time goes on, we'll, we'll be more and more mainstream and, you know, discussions like this uh, allow us to get our message out. Exactly, exactly. Um, the last thing I really want to talk about with you, Mike, is the, um, that you treat a lot of people with anxiety, behavioral issues, and depression, things along those lines, right? Mm -hmm. And you take the same approach, functional neurological and functional medicine approach, to get a person that would, would take these um, psychotropic drugs and uh, to actually lower them or eliminate them completely by getting their bodies to function the way it should. Is that true? Well, um, probably, you know, the late 80s, uh, early 90s, when, when different medications like Prozac and these um, SSRI drugs, you know, were, were created, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, uh, it's been thought that people with anxiety and depression have a chemical imbalance. So, you know, you have a serotonin deficiency and therefore we're going to give you this drug. We're going to, and, and there's many, many, many different brands, but you know, they do pretty much the same thing. They allow to, they, they try to force serotonin to stay in the synapse longer so that you have a, you know, a more robust serotonin, uh, serotonergic experience. So usually when that happens, you know, you can feel happier and, you know, uh, you know, overall you feel better. So, right. but the problem is that, you know, what we've realized over time is that people don't have a serotonin deficiency necessarily. And, you know, what they have is a, a combination of multiple things. And we now know that depression is an inflammatory disorder. If you Google depression and anxiety, you'll get, you know, millions of hits. So, you know, just proving the connection between the two. Uh, we know that the microbiome, something that like the, the gut bacteria plays a huge role in brain activation. And when you have an unhealthy microbiome, you have a change in, 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 in mood, cognition, and so on. And so, you know, anxiety and depression are gigantic problems, but they're really not diseases. They're really symptoms of an underlying problem that nobody's really looking for. So in functional neurology and functional medicine, we're in a unique position to actually track these things down. And I'm really blessed to be able to work with um, Dr. Altshiler and, and Dr. Goldman, two amazing psychologists, so that, you know, somebody comes in and, you know, they, they need coping strategies, they need therapy, but they're not just, that, that's not the only thing they're getting. We're getting a whole neurological, structural, and biochemical approach at the same time to try to help that patient not only cope with what they're feeling, but actually rid them of the problem in the first place. So it's really very cool. Yeah, amazing. It's actually amazing. Um... Now, the whole neurotransmitter thing in the brain, it, and you mentioned digestive tract, mm -hmm. um, do we have neurotransmitters that are produced in the digestive tract? Yeah, I mean, serotonin and dopamine are produced in large quantities in the digestive system, and they do really very key things within the digestive system. I mean, gut motility is very much linked to these neurotransmitters, but we also, those, those neurotransmitters in the brain are very different. They're actually produced in, in a couple of different areas within the brainstem. So, you know, there's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a, I guess a confusion that, you know, people will, you know, say, well, you know, all of the neurotransmitters are made in your gut. They, they are, but those aren't necessarily the ones that are affecting your brain. Um, right. There's a, there's a continuity between the gut and the brain and it's called the gut brain connection. And very often it's through, you know, the, the gastrointestinal bacteria, the, micro, the microbiome, the healthy bacteria that live inside of us and, and all the different microorganisms that live within us have a direct line of communication um, to the brain. We also know that the, that the gut communicates with the brain through the vagus nerve. So there's a very powerful connection between the gut and the brain. And when we, you know, even, even the American Academy of Pediatrics in, in the, one of the recent American uh, psychology journals put out that the the source of anxiety is the gut. So like the whole psychology profession is starting to catch on that, you know what, maybe this isn't all about, you know, um, you know, stress and, and things that are going on in your life and, and emotionality. Maybe there's a biophysical, um, you know, connection. And, you know, there's, there's a new conference that came out last year on 
you know, the functional uh, and biochemical, you know, um, underpinnings of, of mood disorders and so on. So, you know, it's, it's a whole new world. And people well, aren't you, you talked about your one post had the thing in about the uh, CRP. Yeah. Serial so, you know, protein. Yeah. The measure of inflammation in the body. Yep. So, you know, CRP is, um, you know, there are many different measures of inflammation. CRP is a really good one. Um, it tells us about how the, how the body's responding to, um, you know, to its environment. And, you know, is it inflamed? Inflammation is a great thing. It's a really very good thing in an acute way. Like if I bang my elbow on my desk, I get a big swollen elbow. That's normal. It's normal to have that inflammatory response because it's the first step in healing. The problem is when that inflammation becomes systemic, that it causes chronic illness. It gets to the brain, it gets to the heart, and it, you know gets to the pancreas, and you have you know you get diabetes, you get obesity. All these things are all related to this inflammatory process. So we need to know. Where are you on this continuum? Should we get, you know, you should get your CRP checked. Everybody should. We Everybody should. should. That yeah. But if your medical and doctor sees it, I would say 99 out of 100 times, they're not going to do anything about it. Uh, first of all, you know, they don't really test it that often. Um, you know, who tests it is a rheumatologist. And, you know, what they're, what they're really looking to do is, you know, does this patient have an autoimmune condition? So they'll look at things like, you know, high sensitivity CRP. Um, you know, they'll use that in cardiovascular evaluations because it's a direct marker of cardiovascular disease. You know, so we know that people with a high, uh, elevated high sensitivity CRP have a greater risk for heart attack and stroke. Um, you know, we correlate that with other things like the ESR. We look at, um, you know, have our time testing for something called leptin resistance and, you know, looking at how the body responds to its overall environment and how, um, you know, the brain is actually dealing with, with hormone feedback. So, it, I mean, it just, I, it's, it's amazing really. Like, just like how this. Just, just yeah. So the human system me. is just, the human body is just so unbelievable how it's interconnected. And you know what? The problem is that we are trained as, as all different types of doctors, we're trained to look at systems. So we break everything down and then you specialize in the system that you happen to like. You know, if you like feet, you become a podiatrist. You know, if you like the spine, you become a chiropractor. Um, you know, so, but the problem is that that creates very short-sighted doctors because they're not seeing the body as a whole. So they miss out on the idea of how the communication between different regions really drives health. You know, it's not just about putting Band-Aids on people and, you know, and doing things like that. It's really about trying to understand who they are as a person as well as how their body works. And then let me help you unwind what you got yourself into. And then let's fix what you have. Exactly. So let's just, we're going to have to finalize it here. We've gone on long enough. Absolutely. So how can someone reach you? The best way to check me is um, through my website. It's called the optimum you T H E optimum and the letter U.com. And you know, I, uh, I post a lot of, you know, all different kinds of things there. And also, um, you know, you can follow me on Facebook at the optimum you, and, you know, I, I constantly post different things about, you know, all these, all the different topics that we're talking about. And, you know, I have, uh, I'm in, you know, located in Long Island. So if people can come and see me. I work on Skype. Um, but, you know, I, I really try to refer to all of our colleagues all around the country. I mean, I get requests from people all over the place. Like even today, I spoke to a woman from Pittsburgh and, um, I said, you know, listen, I'm happy to, you know, to, to talk to you, but I really would like to refer you and your and your son to somebody locally because they're going to, you know, you're going to need some some rehabilitation. You know, you're going to need some care and it's not something we could do over the, you know, on a Skype call. So, you know, it's a, we have we're really blessed to have a great network of, of like-minded doctors. Exactly. Well, it's been my my greatest pleasure to talk to you tonight and um Thank you, man. And I always, I always wish you. everything the best for you every day. If you, if you know that the Archangel Michael is looking over you and taking care of you, right? I tell Thank him to, I, I tell him, I said, you better be taking care of my, my, my Michael. Thank right? you very much. Good I appreciate it. Take. He's doing a great job. All right. Thank you but very I much. I love you. I love you like a brother. And uh, too, I'm so grateful for you every day. Have a great Continue night. Success. Enjoy. Keep changing, changing brains and changing lives, baby. I will. Yes. All right. <laughs>
Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.